Hi, I'm Andy Young. I'm uh, one of the lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. And we teach automotive. And I produce quite a number of videos for my students, and you'll see on my YouTube channel there's, there's an increasing number every week. Uh, my aim is to cover all the workshop tasks that we do throughout the year for the course. But in addition, any, additional, uh, any other workshop jobs that come through my own workshops at home, which is where we are now. And <clears throat> today, I'd like to use a clamp type ammeter. Now this one is different to the one we used for the alternator output tests. This is a new style, uh, it's made by Limit. It's a Limit 21. And I'm gonna be showing you how to use this to take an amperage draw whilst we're cranking the engine uh, on the starter system. Now, if the amperage draw is low <clears throat> and the, uh, the engine's cranking over slowly, it could be an indication that there could be an internal fault with the starter motor, um, or there could be a point of high resistance somewhere around the starter circuit. And we'll be doing volt drop tests on each section of the starter circuit as well. So we can diagnose whether it's a problem with the starter motor or whether it's a problem with the circuit, the, the wiring on the car. Once we've decided on that, then you can obviously uh, either fix the wiring or take the starter motor off and pull it apart. And you will see, uh, not today, but at some point, there'll be a video uh, that I'll be doing uh, covering how to test the internals of a starter motor. So we're going to pull a starter motor completely apart, test all the various uh, components inside, reassemble it, put it back on the vehicle. So, first of all, without further ado, let's go and... Uh, Go across to the vehicle it's a little black rav4 you've seen this vehicle a few times in other videos it is the same one yes uh, and we're going to take a um, an amperage reading for the draw of a starter motor now um obviously there are lots of different car, kinds of cars around the world little cars with little engines have little starter motors that use little amperage draw uh, cars with big engines and big starter motors uh, I used to have a Mercedes Unimog that had a huge starter motor on it that would draw a tremendous number of amps to crank that engine over. And you've got to look at the vehicle specs to find out um, whether the, the amperage draw reading that we take is going to be in spec for your vehicle. And the spec will be a range. Um, now for sort of two, uh, two, two litre engines, four cylinder two litre engines, we're looking at about 115 to 135 amps draw. Um, for large um, for example, a 4.2 Nissan Patrol, hey, it could be up to 200, 250 amps, who knows? But the manual will tell you. And this is the tool that you need to use to get this reading. Okay, so we're gonna go across to the vehicle. I'll show you what I've done um, to be able to crank the engine over, because um, I'm here on my own today, unfortunately, uh, to crank the engine over uh, and be able to take a reading at the same time, because you need to be under the bonnet to do this. Okay, let's go. Okay, so uh, first of all, you've got to locate the starter motor. And on this little RAV4, um, just like with the alternator, the starter motor, which is hiding just down here, and you can see a Toyota number on it just there, look. That is the starter motor, and it's got a built-in solenoid. Some of the old school minis and stuff will have a remote solenoid, but most starter motors these days, the solenoid forms part of the starter motor itself. Now, what I've done, is you have what's called a trigger wire and that trigger wire comes from your ignition barrel so when you crank the engine you put the key in the start position against that spring-loaded um, feel you know when you turn the key that sends 12 volts down this wire and this wire is connected onto the solenoid and that's what triggers the solenoid and causes the starter motor to fire up so what I've done rather than being sat inside the car I have just tapped straight into, see the little crocodile clip down there, look, I've tapped straight into that feed, and then I can, if you follow the wire around, look, there we go, I can then pop that wire directly onto battery positive, and that <clears throat> will cause the engine to crank. Now, during these tests, we don't want the engine to start. Well, it's not going to start because the ignition's currently turned off. There you go, you see that? All that's doing is causing the starter motor to energize and crank the engine. But the ignition on the vehicle is turned off. We've bypassed the ignition barrel. And that's exactly what we need for this particular test. It's a really simple thing to do. If you find your starter motor, you should have a small wire going to the starter. If you unplug that and then tap straight into it and run a feed 
that you can then control off the, back, the vehicle's battery, you'll be able to crank the engine over. Now obviously make sure the vehicle's in neutral before you attempt to do this. Now, to get a, a starter draw reading, we then also need to find the heavy wire, the thick gauge wire that comes from the battery down to the large terminal on the starter solenoid. And on this vehicle, that's this wire here. Now I've had to pull some of the sheathing off to get to it. But you can see here, this is the wire and it runs down and it connects onto the starter solenoid. Now again, on this RAV4, um, Toyota are really keen on sheathing all the connections and stuff. So the, the bolt that connects this to the terminal, uh, the stud terminal on the solenoid, is all covered in plastic. There's no need for me to take all of that off at the moment. I can get the test just by going onto this wire here with that clamp ammeter. So I'm going to set that up now and then we'll take a reading. Okay, so this is the clamp type ammeter. And uh, what we need to do is choose the correct setting for it. Now this, these particular ammeters, um, or clamp type ammeters, um, they do lots of different things. They don't just take uh, an inductive reading for amperage. Um, they've got on here, we've got voltage. We can take voltage readings. We've got a couple of fly leads with it that came with it as well. Uh, we can do ohms testing, which is great. You know, it's just like a normal multimeter. We can even do a diode test, like what we did in the alternator for the, uh, the rectifier unit. We can do diode test. We've got a continuity test on there as well. We can even measure duty cycle. So we could do a duty cycle of injectors um, and so on. And then we've got two different amperage ranges. We've got a 40 amps, or, or maximum 40 amps, and then up to 400 amps. So this is um, ideal for domestic cars. Um, wouldn't use it on a truck, uh, because I imagine a truck starter motor, especially the big trucks, is going to be slightly more than 400 amps. But anyway, so for what we need to do for a car, this is ideal. And it's also a little bit smaller than the last one that I used during the alternate test. So it's going to be a bit easier to get in um, to, to, to get round that wire, you know. We've got to be able to put the wire through that clamp and then close the clamp, but also be able to still read the, read the screen. Okay, so we'll take it across and we'll get it installed on the vehicle. Now, the first thing to do is to choose the, the right setting. Now, we're doing an amperage test and the specification should be between about 115 to 135 amps. So, we need to be in the four, 400 amp range. Now, this meter will do 400 amps AC or DC. But when we turn it around to the 400 amp setting, it will default to DC, which is exactly what we need. If we want to change that, then I'm sure we can just press a button here, look, probably. Oh, there we go, look, AC. Okay, AC is no good to us. DC is great. If we had an external regulator alternator uh, that was firing out um, AC on the three wires, the three field wires up to the regulator rectifier unit on the bulkhead, then sure, we could use this meter to see how many amps are going down each of those three wires. Could be quite useful to see if there's a variation between field output. Would give us an indication if there's a fault with the stator or not. Okay, so sideline. Right, DC volts, uh, sorry, DC amps up to 400 max is what we need. And we're gonna pop the meter down here and around just the one wire that we're interested in. That's all we need. We don't want it around any other wires. And we need to be able to see the screen. So yes, we can see all of that. Okay, let's give it a crank and see what we get. Okay, let's see if we can get that in the screen there, look. Great, so we're getting around about 130. I'm gonna run that test again and do a, uh, do a hold on the screen. We've got a yellow button just down there, look. If I press the hold button while it's cranking, then you will be able to get a, a static reading. Okay, always a good idea to wear your safety glasses when working under a vehicle, or on a vehicle in this case. Now, um, okay, so we're gonna energize the starter motor, crank the engine over, and I'm gonna press hold on the tool so we can get a, a fixed reading for it. There we go, fantastic. Okay, great job. So, the reading we got was 134.9. Now, obviously the number was jumping around a little bit. Uh, we were sort of between 125 and 135. 
I'm very happy with that. That it, to me, this is a two liter engine. Um, that's fine, no problems at all. It's a cold engine. With a warm engine, that we would see that to be a little bit less um, because there's less friction within a warm engine, and the oil's you know lubricating everything properly by then. So 135 amps near as damn it is absolutely fine for this particular test on this vehicle, and that's a pass. Great job. Okay, now uh, in order to do the the uh, the volt drop test. Um, don't forget, um, like in the alternator video, the on-car volt drop test tells us, or gives us an indication, the larger the volt drop within that section of circuit, uh, the higher resistance, the higher the resistance within that part of the circuit. Now, uh, resistance is something we don't want in a starter motor circuit. Uh, it's going to impede the current flow, uh, and it's going to cause the starter motor to turn over slower. Uh, essentially, less amps can be delivered to the starter motor. Um, so what we need to do is, uh, back to the Toyota, we've got to remove that cover, that safety cover off the large terminal, off the solenoid, and then we can connect um, our meter. Now I'm going to continue to use the clamp type meter uh, because it's got a volt, uh, a volt meter built in. So we can continue to use that, we don't need to use our multimeter. And the other benefit is as well, is it's got this great little hook at the top that we can put around the, the bonnet stack. Okay, so if you can see, good little camera this, let's see if I can get it to focus on there, look at that. Okay, so I've removed this little plastic cap, and now you can see where the heavy cable is connected to the stud with that nut onto the start solenoid. That essentially is battery positive. This heavy cable runs directly from battery positive down to here. The reason why it's sheathed is very important. If that was to, to, to get um, to short circuit onto anything on earth, any of this metal that's around here is battery earth. If that was touched to touch here with a spanner or whatever, um, then it would cause a direct short and it would probably cause a bit of a bit of a fire, you know, potentially. There's a lot of sparks, it would create a hell of a lot of heat. And that's why Toyota have put this cover on there to keep it all nice and nice and hidden away so people don't uh, don't have any accidents. There we go. So I'm going to connect um, one of the meter leads onto here. Uh, it'll be the negative meter lead. And I'll use um, a crocodile clip, so I'd have to hold it all the time as well. Okay, so the negative of the voltmeter is now connected to the, uh, the heavy large terminal where the positive wire comes onto the starter solenoid. That goes up to the meter. And then the positive wire is connected to battery positive. Now, as you can see, whilst we've got no amperage flow, there's no current flow on that wire at all, the starter mode is not uh, energised at the moment, we've got zero volt drop. And that's expected, we shouldn't see anything there at all. It also highlights the fact that you must have current flow along that particular circuit or through the circuit in order to take um, the correct volt drop reading. Now I'm expecting to see no more than 0.2 of a volt volt drop, so we'll just Energize that. I'll try and keep the camera in focus. There you go. Great. So we've got about 0.13 of a volt drop on the meter. So that's definitely a pass. So the positive side of the circuit is a pass. Um, all that's left to do now is to do the same test but on the negative side of the circuit. So we're going to basically test the earth strap from the battery negative onto the engine block because again those can corrode you know especially if they're the um or the weaved type they do tend to corrode quite a bit so i'm going to set set up now and show you what i've done okay so we're all set up for the for testing the negative side of the circuit we've got the positive lead of the voltmeter onto the starter motor casing the bit of the the, the big metal front casing of the starter motor which essentially is connected to uh, the engine, and the engine has an earth strap onto the battery negative. Um, the earth wire of the multimeter is across to the battery, onto the earth side, the negative side of the battery. Okay, so again, as expected, we're getting a zero, zero reading. You may not be able to see that, but we are getting a zero, zero volt reading at the moment. Once we crank the engine over, and we've got amperage flowing through the circuit, we should get a reading, and I'll press the hold button so I can show you the reading once it's done. There we go. Okay, now this one's a little bit high, higher than it should be. We've got a reading on there 
of, you can see that okay? Yeah, I think you can. Of uh, nearly half a volt. So 0.47. That's a fail. Uh, that's way too high. Uh, now, it's unlikely that we're going to have, oh, well, okay, let's talk it through. Um, there's going to be a point of high resistance somewhere between the starter motor and battery negative terminal uh, on the battery, obviously. Um, now, it could be between the starter motor and where it bolts onto the gearbox or the block. Uh, it could be corroded in there, so we must take the starter motor off and wire brush it all up, clean it up, give it a good contact, bolt it back together. Um, it could also be um, between the block of the engine um, to where the earth strap connects, or it could be along the earth strap, maybe the earth strap itself is rotten. It could be where the earth strap connects to the clamp on the battery negative, or it could even be battery negative, to, uh, the clamp, uh, onto the terminal of the battery. It may not be clamped on very well, maybe it's, it's loose, you know. So any point along that, that part of the circuit, there's going to be um, a point of high resistance. Or you know, it, it could be down to um, just something being loose, or it could be down to the earth strap being rotten, and we have to replace that. But we're losing nearly half a volt there, and on the positive side of the circuit, we're losing just over 0.1 of a volt. Um, so you have the two together, and it's a significant volt drop. Um, you know, for example, if the battery is charged up to, you know, 12.6 volts, it's fully charged, uh, and we're losing 0.6, then we're only supplying the starter motor to that 12 volts. Plus, we're going to get a further volt drop because the ignition system is trying to run, uh, the fuel injection system is pulling the, the system down as well, the voltage down as well. So you might find that your starter motor is actually only running at about 11.5 volts, which is a bit of a problem. We want that engine to crank over really quickly. We want a nice crisp spark to start the engine. Uh, and having volt drops like this uh, are going to cause problems. So there you go. That's how to do a volt drop test on the positive and the negative sides of the starter motor circuit. If you find a fault like this, then what you need to do is work your way around that circuit and, see, and, you know, and check the various points for resistance. So what we can do is, I'll set that up for you now, and we'll check between the starter motor and the engine block, and we'll see, where, see if we get a volt drop there. So I'll get set up and we'll test it. Okay, so I've set up um, the multimeter now, so we're gonna basically break down the, the earth side of the circuit into smaller segments, and see if we can identify exactly where along that system, or along that circuit, the point of high resistance is. So what I've done is we've got uh, the positive side of the lead is now going to, well, it's still going to the casing of the starter motor, and the negative lead of the voltmeter is now onto the engine block, pretty close to where the starter motor is bolted to, uh, and without having lots of other things bolted to it. So I've tried to make it as direct as possible onto the block. So we're going to crank the engine and see what we get. Okay, so that particular test, we got 0 0.021 volts volt drop. Tiny amount. That's not where our problem is. I'm now going to move our two probes a little bit further around the circuit, and we'll see what we get. Okay, it's turned out quite interesting, this vehicle. Um, after some extensive research, digging around the engine bay, it turns out that the battery, the earth strap off the battery, goes onto the vehicle body only. Um, normally, the, it will go onto the vehicle body and then continue on to somewhere on the block, or maybe the gearbox. This doesn't have that. What they've got is a series of small earth wires all around the engine bay. There's one, a reasonably large one down here. There's a small one at the back. Maybe there's more. Um, but I can't find anywhere a large earth strap between battery negative and the block of the engine which would indicate uh, why there is such a large volt drop because there's only, you know, even all those small earths added together are nothing like what a proper earth strap should be. It won't have the same section. So therefore we're going to have higher resistance. We're going to get a larger volt drop. Um, so I've, ru I've rigged it up now so that we can read the volt drop um, on the, the larger of the, the wires and we'll see what we're losing on that particular um, connection. Obviously, on the smaller ones, we're going to be losing even more. 
Okay, so crank the engine. Press hold. There we go. We've got, um, if you can see that, we've got 0.26 of a volt, volt drop um, between the engine block and the body of the car. That's a lot. Uh, what all that's left to do now is to check the volt drop between the body of the car and battery negative. But that's definitely concerning. Um, on this particular vehicle, I'll be very. I want to, I feel the need to put in a, an earth wire from the battery, a heavy cable, directly from battery negative straight onto the engine block. That's going to speed up cranking and we're going to have a lot less volt drop. It's all, also going to help. Um, with our charging circuit, don't forget, because the alternator needs a good earth too. Um, it, did, it wasn't as obvious during the alternator, the alternator circuit testing, the volt drop test that we did, but sure, with the starter motor, because we've got so many more amps going through, it's highlighted this issue. So you can rest assured I'll be fitting a, a separate earth strap from battery negative uh, directly onto the engine block on this particular vehicle. Now, whether somebody's left the old one off in the past, I'm sure the engine's been out of this a few times. Uh, I know the, the gearbox has. Um, maybe somebody's forgotten to refit it. Who knows? There's lots of different kinds of mechanics out there. Okay, so I'll rejig, get the connections onto the next, onto the next positions, and we'll go from there. Okay, so uh, we've, we're now testing um, between the body of the car where the, the largest of the small earth straps goes from the block to the body. We're testing from there uh, for the final part of the circuit to battery negative. So we've got the positive wire of the, of the voltmeter onto the terminal, the bolt, where the earth strap joins the body. And we've got the negative probe of the multimeter, the voltmeter, onto the battery negative terminal. Now this is going to test both the, the volt drop through the body, which really there shouldn't be any because there's so much metal there, and it's also going to test the final short earth strap that does go from battery negative to the body of the vehicle. So it's testing that final part of the circuit. There shouldn't be any, any problems with the body. Sure, if we had a corroded uh, bolt um, where it connects that, that uh, earth strap to the shell of the car, if that was corroded, that would cause a high, a high reading. Okay, so we're going to crank it up and see what we get. Okay, so uh, again we've got 0.17 uh, volts volt drop um, on that part of the circuit. So what I'll do now is I'll move the probe, we'll, we'll get rid of the body section, I'll move the probe from there to the other end of that earth strap so we can measure just that final earth strap and see if that 0.17 is loss is in that section there. Not the easiest thing to get through in the world. Obviously it's really important that you get a good connection on here. Uh, otherwise it's going to give us a false reading. can't see it on the gauge because I couldn't press the hold button, but we got uh, 0.13 of a volt volt drop just on that short earth strap there. That's in itself not good. It's probably only six inches long is that cable. So there's either a problem with that cable onto the body of the car or what I suspect is the case is um, the clamp onto the battery is a bit iffy. It's not really clamping on there very well. So. What we've got essentially, uh, in summary, is a number of faults. Down at the starter motor end, starter motor to block, that was fine. But from then on, around the circuit, we've got small issues. We've got lots of little volt drops. 
we've got a volt drop between the block and the shell of the car, and we've got a volt drop from the shell of the car onto battery negative, all of which need to be sorted out. We don't want to see any more than 0.2 of a volt drop on either side of those two circuits. Essentially, the earth side of the circuit really should be quite should be the shortest. It's got it should have the shortest distance uh, and the largest amount of um, conductivity. You know, it's got a, the whole body of the car. Um, earth strap should be quite heavy. That should have the least resistance. Uh, the positive cable on this car isn't particularly long. It's probably I don't know two and a half feet long. That's not too bad at all. Um, if you're dealing with the old BMWs and stuff that had the batteries in the boot, the old minis with the battery in the boot, you've got these great long cables running the full length of the vehicle and you're going to get larger volt drops. Um, and as a result, they need to fit larger batteries and heavier cables to compensate for that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do some work on this car now. I'm going to tidy up those earthing points. I'm going to make a new earth strap that goes for, directly from battery negative onto the block of the engine. Uh, and that's going to solve a lot of the problems. We'll retest it once that's fitted and we'll see what result we get. Okay, cheers. Okay, so what we've done now is I've added a new earth strap which comes off battery negative and it runs down onto this um, pickup point here, a substantial bolt onto the block. So that's added a new earth strap. It's going to hopefully reduce the volt drop that we were experiencing earlier on. So I'll grab the meter and we'll uh, get it plumbed up. And the test that we're going to do is basically what we did earlier on, which is from the block, which will be just get the cable sorted out. Okay, so we'll come off, come off there, and we'll go on to battery negative. There we go. We can. So, volts, here we go, trigger wire, Let's see what we get. Let's get the right. There we go, okay. Okay, so we've got 0.4, now previously we had 0.47, and you can see that on there to, to stop it. Okay, so a point. 0.4 on the meter of a volt drop. That's still a little bit high. Still not happy with that. Um, I think the next step is to change the clamp that goes onto the battery. Uh, that looks a bit dodgy. And uh, then we can retest again. But uh, we, are, we are making progress. So essentially, I'll cut the video off at this point. Um, I've shown you basically how to do uh, an amperage draw test. On the, on the starter motor, uh, and we got, I think, 134.9 amps draw uh, during cold cranking, which is, in my opinion, within spec. I'm sure if I dig out the total manual, we'll find that's okay. On the positive side of the circuit, we had a very small volt drop. I think it was 0.12 from memory. Uh, volt drop, which again is within spec. 0.2 is the maximum uh, permissible. Uh, of course, it varies from car to car, you know, it's only a general guideline. Um, on the negative circuit, though, however, we found a number of faults, uh, a number of points of high resistance around the circuit, which was adding up to just under half a volt, uh, volt drop within the negative circuit. Now, that's way, way, way too high, and it's still too high at 0.4, even though I've put a new earth strap in there. So I'm going to replace the, um, the battery clamp, the negative terminal clamp, uh, and I'm hoping that that's going to make a huge difference. And I'll, I'll grab one of those next time I'm in town, put it on, and um, I'll test it. Fingers crossed it'll be all fixed. Okay, so um, using one of these meters, the, the Limit 21, very, very useful. Um, not only is it a, an induction type ammeter, but we can also use it for testing resistance, continuity. Um, we can test it for, uh, we can use it for testing voltages, just like a standard multimeter. So it really is just a little multimeter. Um, but it also has the benefit of the clamp inductive ammeter as well. So in one unit, it does everything I need it to do, um, especially with the, the duty cycle as well. That's really useful. Okay, well, my name's Andy Young. Um, I hope you found this informative. Um, the next part of this video will be uh, taking a starter motor apart, looking at the solenoid, 
and uh, looking at the internals of the actual motor itself, the commutator, the brushes, um, the pole magnets, basically everything inside a starter motor, just in case you have the, the sudden urge to pull one apart and try and fix it. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.